Okay, hi guys, Mr. the Boss here, and in this video I'm going to talk about my dream specifications for the next iPhone, whether it be the iPhone 6s or the iPhone 7, hopefully the iPhone 7. So Apple has cemented a very strong position in the market, you all know their profits are absolutely soaring at the minute. For some reason, even though the iPhone 6 was hardly innovation, it has sold incredibly well. I mean, there's people everywhere with iPhones, more than we've ever seen before. With the iPhone 7, Apple needs to get its priorities straight, and this actually involves becoming a lot more like its competitors. So, I mean, clearly it can make plenty of profits doing what it does, but in terms of the consumer and the dream phone that we really, really want them to produce, this is what we want to see. So to start with, it needs to be really powerful. I mean, A10 quad-core processor. I mean, all we're really asking them to do is to just keep up with their competitors. Apple is clearly incredibly good at optimizing its software, so if they can actually put in equivalent hardware to Android counterparts, then this thing will be blazing fast. We will truly see console games, like literally Xbox One, PlayStation 4 quality looking games on this device if they manage to get the optimization right. 16 megapixel f 1.8 aperture lens eyesight camera. Apple has been lagging behind at least in the megapixel department with its previous devices. It's basically stuck with 8 for quite a long time. Now this hardly means it's produced poor results. The iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus have one of the best phone cameras currently available, which only goes to show that with even more megapixels, with a wider lens to capture even more light, they could create a truly stunning piece of camera technology, something which perhaps it even exceeds digital cameras in its price range. Now the next thing is IP69K waterproofing. Now this is the highest level of waterproofing. Most devices stop at IP68, but 69K means full coverage from dust and water at any strength, any depth, and any angle. This is a seriously cool feature and would mean you literally just stop worrying about it altogether. And then you combine that with Gorilla Glass 4 and you have a phone that will truly stand the test of time. However, I'm thinking it's going to be doubtful Apple will actually include this technology, which is up and coming by the way, just because of how much money they actually make out of screen repairs. I mean, it's incredible the proportion of iPhones that are actually smashed. It really is almost as if people can't get through a phone cycle without smashing their iPhone. So Gorilla Glass 4 construction would seriously help the problem. Next, the screen size. I really don't think Apple nailed it with the displays this time around. The iPhone 7, although it's a good size, lacks a bit of resolution, and the iPhone 6 Plus is just way too big for the main market. Having said that, I think the absolutely best display you can actually come up with at the minute is a 5-inch 1080p panel, because this is extremely sharp. I mean, this display is so sharp that you cannot distinguish pixels. It's the perfect combination of not draining too much battery, allowing for seriously fast performance, and giving you stunning visuals. It should employ the IGZO technology, first used by the iPad Air 2, which means the display is very, very close to the front, and you get these vivid blacks and really, really strong colours. Now, another interesting idea which I kind of thought of is that they should actually employ a e-ink sub-display. As seen with phones like the Yota phone, if they could maybe incorporate the front display with e-ink technology as well as the actual IGZO technology, then you could save huge amounts of battery. This thing would be a perfect companion to take on the go and just read books So maybe on. you could sort of turn off the phone and then reboot in e-book mode, and then in that mode you could perhaps maybe just make calls, receive calls, and then read books. And, I mean, the battery could last for months in this phase, as seen by previous examples such as the Kindle or the Nook. I mean, it really is quite an impressive bit of technology in terms of battery management. And if they combine this with a large capacity battery, I mean, 3,500 may be pushing out the boat a little bit, but a large battery, then the iPhone is going to suddenly start to appeal to the masses. When I personally think of iPhones, I often initially associate it with music. And because iPhone, iPods, they're all basically focused on listening to music, there should be more emphasis placed on this, so as well as including things like a detailed equalizer in the software settings, a really powerful inbuilt amp, that kind of thing. I also think they should actually improve the iPhone by actually adding a physical music control key. This could just be like one tiny little button which you press to play, press to pause, double press to just skip track. Yeah, this would be a really good convenience instead of actually having to open the phone by clicking on the home button or the on button and then actually physically going on the screen and pressing skip track, you just do it with a click of one button on the side. It would be no big deal for them, but a really big deal for us. Now the iPen. Now this is basically my idea for a stylus on the iPhone. 
I think, you know, the technology for this kind of thing has come very far, as seen with the Note devices. You know, Samsung's Note devices sell incredibly well, and although it's not just because of the stylus, that really does help to separate the device. You can actually do a lot of useful things with that, and note taking is a seriously handy thing. Increase the precision a bit, make it a really integrated experience into iOS, and I think the iPen could be a really great thing. And last but not least, third party software support. Open up iOS, Apple. I think this will really help bolster the actual features on offer with your phone. If you just let developers do what they want, then they will really create some stunning bits of software as seen on Android. I mean, I really don't think actually closing the ecosystem is doing them any favours. Okay guys, that's it for me. This is what I want to see in the next new iPhone.